All right, hello everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Connect series. As you can see, we're back in the office. It's good to be back. Happy to see these smiling faces. <laughs> uh, my name is Adrian Fernandez and I'm joined by my co-host Nick Smith, as usual, in the flesh. Uh, and today we have a very special guest, Andres Blanco. Thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, thank he's, you. Absolutely. He's part of our 2.4 gigahertz 15.4 software apps team. Um, he's got a very special demo to show you guys here today. Yeah, and, and today really what, what we're going to see is, uh, you know, the TI Connectivity Group recently announced the expansion of our portfolio, um, both downwards to strip off some features of the 2652 platform and make it more cost effective, and also to increase the memory and increase some of those features for new protocols and new use cases uh, that people want to do. Now, the hardware is pin-to-pin -pin compatible. Uh, mm -hmm. But one question out there is, how about the software? Can I get any reuse between? And Andres, that's really what, what we brought you here to address. Yeah, definitely. So uh, today I'll be showing you how we can go ahead and just using our out-of-the-box examples from the SDK and quickly just change or switch from a CC2652 R1 uh, onto a 2652 R7 device. And so that's the devices that have been released now for a couple of years, the 2652 R1 to the scaled up memory device, the R7. Yes, definitely. Um, the main difference here, of course, is the memory. Um, uh, it's still pin to pin compatible, but the software is different. Uh, but we are providing you with a new uh, tool set uh, that allows you to switch devices on the go and does all of this or most of it for you. Anything missing, you will see that the sysconfig tool will allow you or show you how to switch everything on the fly. Uh, so, you know, right now you can see in my screen, uh, what I have here is CoComposer Studio. I've imported already from our SDK, the RF Packet TX. We'll go ahead and open uh, the sysconfig file here. And under sysconfig, you will see everything you can modify here. So you can see here on the right side of the screen, uh, you have ADCs, uh, the RF here under custom, um, and everything else. But today we're focusing only on the hardware. So you'll go in the top right corner, open the device view, and, and then we will go into the switch option, which uh, right now you can see is in the beta version. Um, we're still modifying it and improving it as we go. So you press here. It's going to give you a quick warning, you know, uh, go through it. Uh, but today we're going to go and switch from the 2652R1, like we mentioned, onto the R7. So we drop down until we find it, and here it is. Uh, it gives you a little warning saying that some things might not be compatible, and that's fine. Uh, we will confirm. And now you can see we've successfully changed, and we will follow anywhere where we see that uh, yellow exclamation point which I can't see any of them. So, so far, so good. Now, let's make sure by going to the project properties that the tool successfully changed the compiler target. Uh, you can see here on the project properties under general, you can see that the variant changed from the 2652 R1 onto R7. Your project name still says R1. Of course, we are basing it off of that one. Just think of this as your application code. You already have it named as something. So it's going to stay with the same naming convention uh, because all you're doing is changing the target device. Uh, now, we sh it should be as simple as trying to build and compile. Let's go here. And we should be able to have the same exact software. Nothing changed other than using the switch tool. And it should build and compile now. That's awesome. And maybe while it's building and compiling, I uh, guess to summarize, what we're seeing here is uh, a tool, sysconfig, is really guiding the customer through that migration path. And as we saw, sysconfig actually did everything to help enable that migration. Yep. But I guess in some cases, there may be a few things left for the customer to go off and do, and sysconfig will, will guide them through that. Yeah, definitely. So some of these cases could be, for example, um, let's say that you're switching from a device that has two UART instances uh, onto only one UART. So it's going to pop up a little warning telling you, hey, uh, we don't have two UARTs. What are you going to do with this pins? Mm. Um, and you can go ahead on the same menu that I'm showing you, and you can just switch it around and decide what you want to do. And it will change the application code for you. Uh, as you see, we did not touch any source code whatsoever here. 
And as you see here, it built and compiled successfully and we have an out image already. Awesome. awesome. Yeah, it's very cool because what it enables is, you know, across the portfolio that we've expanded, BLE, Zigbee, Thread, Sub 1 gigahertz devices, now you can basically pick and choose the correct device based on memory, based on features, based on cost, the correct device for your application, but you can reuse the software. Oops. So say you, know, you start with a basic application on one of the lower memory devices, and you find later down the road you want to expand, um, what you've just shown is that the code will port very easily and intuitively, and our tools will guide you through that process. Exactly. Awesome. Well, Andres, thank you for being here. This is awesome. Also, one of the first guests back in person, which yeah, is great. I'm happy. Thank you, guys. Uh, thank you for joining us on this episode of Connect. All of the information about the new products and everything will be down linked in the description, and you'll be able to access the example that Andres showed today. As always, we have more great stuff planned for you, so tune into the next video. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.